And we're seeing the digital acceleration agenda just be fast track. I would say probably three years, if not five, depending on mm-hmm. some sectors. What are you seeing with investors around that digital acceleration? I know a lot of investors that just do tech, just do digital. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a different game. You know, when you create something digital, the, its ability to scale yeah. is incredible, right? And particularly when it's a, an app and it's downloads and it's, you know, that type of game. Um, there's not really been many verticals that give you that type of pop. But at the same time, it's huge, huge risk, right? Because there's X amount new apps is, new apps launch on the app store every day. You know, I don't know the numbers, but it would be in the thousands, tens of thousands. So it's not enough to have a great idea and to have a beautiful app but it's about how are you going to go and get traction? If it's users, how do I get users? If it's clients, how do I get clients, you know? And from there, uh, particularly if it's a B2C play, I think one of the most important things is understanding behavior. You've built your MVP, however you've built it, and you've launched it. This next two, three months is going to be the foundation for your next round of investment, right? So, whole bunch of key metrics that you really need to be trying to maximize. Um, One of them obviously is users. How many users have you got? How many are paying? That's an interesting metric. You know, how many download it? How many pay? Uh, If it's free, what's your model? You know, just understanding the relationship between downloads and usage is very important. Um, How sticky is it? So how often are people coming back per week? You know, investors love sticky apps. Um, The stickiest app in the world for me anyway, is probably my email or Spotify, right? Love Spotify, listen to music in all different situations. So I'm probably on that 10 times a day doing something or another. Instagram, again, very sticky. You know, the way that they're, we, if you've seen um, the documentary recently, uh, I can't remember what it's called, The Social Dilemma. Um, you know, the way that they're playing with brain chemistry, you know, unhealthy in many ways, but um, very sticky. So how are you creating an experience that keeps people coming back? You know, that value that I'm getting so much from it that I'm gonna dip into it again. Um, another one is around, uh, if I have, a, an e-commerce play, for example, what's the relationship between the regular purchase rate and the purchase rate on my experience, you know, or how many pages viewed, if this is a new e-commerce, uh, piece of tech, does it, does it impact these key metrics? Are they spending more time on these platforms, you know, having data that highlights behavior then you can go to investors and say, look, it works. I've got a thousand people using it this way. If you give me cash, I can turn that into 10,000 people using it this way. And that's really the fundamentals for really a series A. Find AI and machine learning is a very big topic. Yeah. That type of business model, you need a runway of at least 12, minimum 12 to 18 months, just to have some meaningful data yeah. that can be used in a very intelligent manner. Mm-hmm. But if you've just got a, uh, an idea and a concept, which is AI machine learning, yeah. I always worry about those businesses because I always find they don't have enough, enough touch points to be able to prove yeah. what the concept can do. Are you kind of seeing that as well? Do you find that investors step away because they're like, great idea, but not enough user testing experience and feedback loop it's interesting because if you're an investor that's in the ai space right a lot of investors won't be because it's not something they understand but if you've had a career in ai or you've had a startup that's done well in ai you've made an exit you understand the process with an ai startup right and i think with ai it's not just that you need lots of data because you need lots of data Um, but you need clean data and data that's actually meaningful, right? That, that, that works with your model. So for example, um, I had a a health tech startup, um, ages ago that was looking at, um, I think it was looking at MRIs or something like that and using MRI reports to, um, completely understand MRIs, help novices basically understand MRIs because it's expensive to go and get that done and look down all this type of stuff. Um, they had their hands on tens of thousands of MRI scans, but 80% of them weren't a, a good enough quality for the AI to read, right? So all of a sudden you, you've a tiny data set. So yes, it's about having a huge amount of data, but you need to have data that, that's clean and accurate and suitable, which is hard to get. Um, if you're an AI startup, 
I think it's always going to be tough to raise money without proving that in some way the model is significant, that the model works. Um, I think a lot of startups bootstrap to the point of having uh, a significant outcome. Um, that's why usually AI startups are founded by tech wizards, right? Because they can, they can do it um, themselves and they don't have massive costs to, to sort of supplement that with. Um, and when it gets to the point where the data is meaningful, you can then, you know, go spend 20K on UX, UI and you're done. You know, that's, that's the easy part. You know, you go pay a studio to do it. It's, it's relatively simple. Um, but without investing serious time um, and getting your hands on proper data, it's going to be tough to invest in an AI project. So if you enjoy this content, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll be creating weekly business boardroom conversations just like this.